Yeah, so um, yesterday went pretty... I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not really sure what to think of it, to be perfectly honest, because in some ways it was a really good day. In some ways it was a really terrible day. Um, you know, my fate is effectively sealed on our leaderboard. I'm, I'm fighting for third place now on our private leaderboard. And it was kind of a, a disastrous part one. My part two was pretty good, and I made up a lot of time. I definitely um, am pretty happy with how that went, but yeah, not not the best thing ever. Um, yeah, definitely would have liked <clears throat> part one to have gone better. Um, I definitely would have had a chance on part two to make up some time. Um, so yeah, welcome. Today is day 21 of Advent of Code. We're just under four minutes out, and I'm gonna go get some water. So I think one strategy that I'm gonna to try today is is think if there's a way to cheese part one, because it seems like it's always the case that that's what you can do. Um, and maybe I can avoid losing so much time on part one if I do that. Um, it may bite me on part two, but I'm normally fast enough on part two that it's um it's okay. Yeah, last night was a very, very late night, or really early morning was really what happened. I after stream, after doing Advent of Code, I had to hop in and finish up some grading. But I did do that, I did finish. So so that's good. Yeah, hoping for any result that's any clo any better than um than last night. I mean, at least I enjoyed being murdered by the problem last night. It was a it was a fun problem. Um, I just wish I wish that it was not so. It was it, it did get tedious for a a few hours there trying to debug stuff. But we're at forty stars. This year is definitely easier than last year. I feel like, but we're at forty stars. We're going for the long haul. We're going for the long haul. We're going to solve all these problems. And we're starting now. Oh dear. Okay, let's just parse stuff. Um,
Um, Oh, uh, wait a second. So, Oh, I see. They're not. They they are always. There is some allergen. Okay, so that's good. Um, Split by a comma. So dairy, why why is so this one matches here? So it could uh, uh, it could be, f and then this one. So K, this one. Okay. So we have to figure out what's common between these two sets and these two sets, and we just have to uh, to intersect all those together, and then we have to. Okay, so this contains dairy. This is going to really be unfortunate, guys. Okay.
Can you do intersect like that? Oh yeah, there we go. brain enough for that. Allergen?
Uh, shoot. Actually, I don't think I have to worry about this second set. So what makes it so that S B B B B B whatever? Where is where does it appear?
So any of these can be soy, right? Well, shoot. So the issue is that we're eliminating everything. So when are we allowed to eliminate? So dairy goes to this thing. Fish could be either one of these two things. Dairy goes to this thing.
I see. So if, if, if the set is empty, then it could just be not an allergen, I guess. However, if the allergen isn't listed, the ingredient that contains that allergen could still be present. Or maybe, okay, so. So this one, the reason that it cannot contain, cannot be an allergen, contain one of these things is because fish, fish, this and this match up and this and this match up. Oh wait, if they're equals, well, so this matches this, dairy, dairy. Oh, um. So when we look at these first two, we see that this and this match up, and that's it, and these two match up. Which means that these could potentially Dairy could be any one of these. Oh, oh wait, dairy can be any one of these. Dairy can be any one of these. And then we intersect those sets together. Well, and fish can be any one of these. Fish can be any one of these. We intersect those sets together. Allergen to can be, maybe? So for
Hydrogen. <clears throat>
Vale. So I'm trying to get over the hump here of figuring out how to do this inference. Oh, this is where I do the intersections thing. Uh, hi, Joshua. No, I did not beat you, I bet. If you're done. Yeah, it's kind of another disastrous day, honestly. Um... My gosh.
I feel like I'm supposed to union all the ones that are the same thing together. Was it day 16? <sighs> I, I don't know. Ah, cool. No idea how this works. But we can do this.
shoot. What in the world? It's not removing from the frickin' set.
That sucked. <sighs> okay, um... Eh, that was... That was a terrible, terrible time. Uh, I just, I spent way too long just going around in circles doing nothing useful. As normal, so maybe it's actually par for the course. Hey McPanda, welcome to chat. Um, I was actually expecting it to be much shorter today as well, just because the he he tend that um it tends to be that weekdays are easier, but I, I'm kind of disappointed it wasn't harder to be perfectly honest, because it's it's one of those where you know I don't know <sighs> yeah that was kind of a terrible day it's kind of disastrous. But as I said, it's kind of par for the course. I, at this point, I, I kind of feel like, um, yeah, I mean, I can't even get top 1,000 on this. Kind of pathetic. Um, okay, I'm just going to clean up some stuff. And then we can... I guess discuss what this debacle is. Um, um, There we go. Um, nice job, McPanda. <sighs> yeah, I kind of just suck at this, don't I? A equals. Okay, so let's like actually use real variable names. What the heck even is this? Um, wait, can I do or equals? Or is it and equals? It's and equals. There we go. That looks really nice. So let's pull this out. And we can we can annotate this shared code. And then down here we just get rid of that. Um
I didn't realize how similar this was to 16. It's very, very, very similar. Like to the point where I literally copy and pasted the code. But it wasn't quite as clear cut because you can't always remove. The only, the only difference is this part here. You can't always remove from the set. So there was a little bit of difference, but I, I, I was a little bit too slow identifying that. I was like, oh, this should be, this should be harder, but it wasn't, it really wasn't. Um, okay. Point two six seconds. Okay. Um, let's see. Is there a way to? I'm guessing that if I do this, it starts to fail, right? Yep. So I do need this, or maybe I'll just do that. Um, Deep copy faster. Ah, it's about the same. Okay. Um, how much of the 0.26 seconds is is interpreter startup time? That's a good question. I have no idea, and I don't really care. <laughs> um, uh, uh, time code Python. Um, what's the way that you're supposed to do this? I guess you can just use time. Um, Maybe what I'll do here is actually include PQRST. Include this as a debug thing. Yeah. I mean, it may just be me doing something stupid. That's always a distinct possibility. Um, What does this give me? Is this in seconds? Let's just do... Oh, order of operations, you idiot. So I guess in proportion takes three seconds or three milliseconds. Good grief, not three, three seconds. That would be atrocious. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm using some... I don't think that this is exactly efficient. I was confused for the longest time if, like, everything had ingredients. Because the line said... I, 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 read, it the, I read it backwards. Because the line said that um allergens all aren't always marked and then i thought that there might be something that didn't have parentheses so that was like really concerning to me and then it was like oh it's it's not actually that it's totally fine um okay so let me uh Yeah, that, that part made sense to me. It was that 
I thought that each each food item would have multiple could have zero allergens, which confused me greatly. It seems like there's there's lots of shared code these days. I don't know, what did you guys think of this problem? I didn't like it as much, honestly. Yeah, it, it was, t again, another one of these fast twitch problems, and I mean, obviously I'm not happy with how I did on it either, so that doesn't help, but yeah, it, it was it was too similar to, to 16, especially part two, um, I agree, so. Okay, so it's not just me, it's... Okay, so let's add that as a debug. So the shared code is, is super, super cheap as, I mean, it should be. This is, this is a very, very inexpensive um, share, bit of shared code to set up basically the list of allergens that, well, basically this no allergen set. Um, and then let's time part one. Let's just do this so that I don't have to, uh, I can avoid having to ever do stuff in this function. Um, <sighs> wow, that's really kind of slow. I mean, I guess I could pre-compute this. That's probably, I mean, this is a, in the squared, right? This is probably, this is, Joshua, this is probably what's, um, yeah, I mean, this is definitely what's, what's the problem. Um, so yeah, let's not do that. Let's, let's change that. Um, Okay, so there we go. That that helps it significantly. Um, wait, I am calculating milliseconds, right? That's, it's just, I assume that time is in milliseconds. Yeah, it's in seconds. So multiplying by a thousand is correct. And then let's see, let's see how, how bad part two is. I don't know, this was kind of disappointing for a day 21 problem. Like I definitely, I mean, partially because I was hoping that I would be able to just, um, uh, wait it out. Um, like part, so part of me was hoping that I would be able to just outlast the people on my private leaderboard tonight because I don't have work tomorrow 
I'm taking the day off, the entire week off. Um, and so I was just hoping that I would be able to outlast everyone and get a couple points. Mm. But yeah, they all beat me. So honestly, I'm not sure if I can even catch up at this point. It's a 14 point gap over the next four days. Seems pretty difficult. So, um, okay. So part two is kind of inefficient. Uh, it's probably this. I have no idea how this works, to be perfectly honest. Okay, I guess at this point, um, we'll go ahead and annotate what happened. Oh, before I do, let's get the end this stuff for part two. And the debug at the end. Yeah. Somehow I managed to be worse than last night. Look at this. Garbage. And I doubt I even got, yeah, I, Adam got, uh, got in before me today. Um, so good on him. It was such, it was so close today. I was only a couple minutes off. What else happened? My incremental was garbage. What, what happened? What even happened? How did Colin get it so fast? I guess, I mean, I was basically, again, I, I was basically solving part two during part one. Okay, whatever. Um, we'll just go ahead and what do we do? Um, okay, let's talk about how this thing works. I guess I should explain what this problem is. So, so basically, the idea is that we have this list of in, of foods. Each line is a food. Each line has a set of ingredients and then a thing, basically a warning label, things that it could contain. So somewhere in here, dairy and fish exist. Somewhere in here, dairy exists. Somewhere in here, soy exists. Somewhere in here, fish exists. So the trick is, what is the trick? Um, I don't even know what the trick is. Basically, we have to calculate the uh the the set of things that it cannot be where was i um yeah we have to figure out what ingredients can't possibly contain any of the allergens i still don't really understand how this works to be perfectly honest but this is the code for it well um but before we get there the input parsing not too not very interesting um, I'm not even going to really discuss it a ton. It's just putting stuff into foods and then the ingredients lists. Anyway, the core of part one is that you have to go through all the foods and figure out which allergens or which, in which ingredients could be, could contain which allergens. So effectively we go through each of the pairings each of the lines. Um, wait, what is this doing? I don't even know. Well, first of all, we can make this like less stupid. Oh wait, no, never mind. Uh, for each ingredient, what is this thing? It's like the whole, <sighs> ah, okay, so Joshua was talking here in chat. If there is an ingredient, if there's an allergen listed, all of the ingredients that are not listed do not contain that allergen. Oh wait, did that say that?
No. But, oh, I see. That makes sense. Yeah, so, so the idea here is that if... So dairy can be any one of these. Fish can be any one of these. But uh, it can't be, for example, this one, right? It can't be F, 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 J, P, Dingy, Madu, J, right? And it can't be this guy here. So that's the, that's the idea. Um, and effectively what we do here is we just go through all of the uh, allergens and we say that that allergen could course be inside of this ingredient so th this map will end up being like i mean i can print it um uh that you know dairy can be from the first one it could be any one of those from the second one it could be any one of these and then the key idea is that Anywhere that dairy exists, it's going to be consistent. So, like, um, it can be either, well, it can, it, it can basically just only be MX, M, V, X, V, K, D. It can't be any of the others. Because if it were any of the others, then F, V J K L wouldn't be in you know uh, it would have to be in this list as well because it did contain if this was dairy then this list would have to contain it as well if if this was the 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 thing that mapped to dairy and so that's what this part is doing um, basically it's it's taking the intersection of a list of of sets um, and just intersecting them together. So I think I can just do uh, no allergen. Wait, did I? S <sighs> I'm still so confused. I feel like this basically solves part. How are you supposed to cheese part one? I don't even know. Uh, so um so yeah what happens here so basically we need to eliminate things that could be allergens uh from the no allergen set and the way we do this is we go through each one of these we intersect the two lists or N lists together. We remove anything in that intersection from the the no allergen set. Maybe I can just actually do Um, everything here, does that work? Well, if I spelled it right, maybe. Okay, so this, this I think, ex, uh, is a, mo a more concise way of saying it. Um, no allergen is just the set of everything, and then we for for each of the allergens and the can bees, um, uh, then we just remove it from the set, or we remove it. Then um, we remove it from no allergen because it could be an allergen. <sighs> okay, then. What we do is we sum together the occurrences of all of the non-allergen things in the list, and that's this guy. Um, all ingredient occurrences is just a a dictionary 
containing the, the number of occurrences or the, the ingredient to the number of occurrences. Okay. Um, any way to... This is about as Pythonic as you can get. Let me commit real quick. Okay, so let's talk about part two, I guess. So the key here is that um, let me let me take a look at this link that Jat sent. Chat just sent. I, I, what is, I guess Z3 is supposed to, what is Z3 supposed to do? Oh, this doesn't sound scary at all. Oh my. What is it supposed to do? Start here. <laughs> oh, it's a sat solver. Oh, this kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very sat solvery. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Um, It would honestly be more interesting if it was like a uh, like hard sat problem, not that I just like throw throw some something quick at the wall. I don't know. I mean, the thing about it is like there's no real reason to use a sat solver in the sense that like like if you know how to use it already, then then that's fine. But if you don't know how to use it, like these are just basically all brute forceable. It's kind of unfortunate. And this was a really kind of, yeah, I don't know. This was kind of a really lame part too. There wasn't anything. There's, there's no, there was no, um, there was no like, it wasn't algorithmically interesting at all. Um, Okay, so what happens here? Um, basically, uh, so default ticks are great. Um, basically, they allow you to to instantiate uh, if you index into an array and there's nothing there, or index into a dictionary and there's nothing there, it'll use whatever the constructor that you pass in as the argument. A lot of times what you'll see is default dict int, which will initialize an int and that just automatically gives you, automatically gives you zero or like list or set, something like that. In this case, it's a lambda, which does a deep copy of the entire all ingredients set. Um, let's just do If you notice when I'm when I'm solving, I tend to not like add any. Um, I, I tend to just do whatever rolls off the fingers. Um, underscores or not, um, it, it works. Uh, all ings occurrences. There's no reason for all. That's kind of redundant. That one's good for all. Um, let's see here. So back to the explanation. Um, effectively, what's going on here is that we I, I, we're um, uh, by assuming that all of the ingredients of the allergens can be any of the ingredients. The 
boxing that. And then we go through each of the, the pairings uh, of foods. Uh, certain ingredients as being the ones that correspond to the given color gen. Okay, um, so let's just like use same variable names, replace A and do B here. Um, And the the and operator is uh, set set intersection, so we figure out what um, ingredients are common between the two foods. Then we yeah, I mean I basically had solved this. Oh my gosh, definitely overcomplicated part one, and then and then. But I, I did, I don't know. It didn't even help me on part two. I was just too slow. Anyway. Um, um, so, uh, common ingredients and then the ones that intersect is the common allergens. Common allergens. Um, so, <laughs> let's do that. The, the key, the key idea here is that, um, if there's only one common allergen between the two foods, then uh, it must be the case that the things that it, uh, the um, so if there's only if there's only one common allergen, then one of the things that the food one of the ingredients that the food has in common must be that allergen. So that's what this is doing. If the common allergen's length is one, then we look into possibilities and we and equal it with common ingredients minus no allergen. So do we do we need this? No, we don't we don't need that. There's no point. Okay, perfect. Well, wonderful. Um and I have no idea why we need no allergens at this point. Oh my gosh. This is another case where I saw I basically saw part one poorly, or saw part two poorly for part one, and then screwed myself. Like I literally had this code for part one, or something very very similar, and then I didn't realize that it was the same thing, or I didn't I didn't I don't know, whatever. Anyway, so what this does is it narrows down the allergens that, or the ingredients that could correspond to the allergen. Um, but it's not quite there because there's a few complications, namely that there's some things in here that have that have multiple things that they could be. But you are always guaranteed with this that there's going to be one that has a single thing that's possible, and then it's just part. It's part. It's day sixteen. It's literally just day sixteen. So you basically keep this true map, which is just a map of the true uh, the ingredient or the the allergen to the real ingredient name, um, and then. Basically, you go find here, find the ingredient 
that only has uh, the allergen that only has one aller uh, ingredient and pull it out of the possibles dictionary and remove it from the ingredient Uh, remove it from all the other sets. And that's all that this is doing. We go, we find, we're just finding a field that has nothing in it, or it has one thing in it, and then we are, we're setting, setting the true map to this. This is kind of annoying. I don't, I always hate this, but is there a set first? Oh, I should have used pop. Yeah, pop is the way to go. Avoid converting that to a list. Um, so then at the very end, um, can we avoid doing this? No. So we have to we have to do the sort. Um, we have to sort by the key, which is the allergen name, um, and that's fine. That's what this does by default, because this will give us tuples, and then sorting on tuples will use the first thing as the the sort key. Um, the first element of the tuple, and then it'll go to the next element if it needs to tie break. And that's it. That's literally it for today. There's not a ton more to go over. It honestly was a very boring problem that I did badly at, but we already knew that that was going to happen, so that's nothing new. What is new is that this was kind of an annoying problem, just as far as being boring. But it is what it is. Um, okay, I, I don't know what else to say about this. Um, let me, I guess, just add add this to the readme. I honestly would, I don't know. Today was not. I I would I would rather have int code than this. Like I really would. I would rather have something more complicated, more difficult. You know these are these are kind of fun, but they're they're not they're not long enough to to make it feel like you've really accomplished anything, and they're just like at the point where I'm so slow at them, and it and it matters like a minute matters, you know, two minutes matters, three minutes matters. I don't really like those problems, but it is what it is. Um, okay, let's just check the calendar as well. Looks like we're back in the air, I guess, or something. What was the what was the story here? Oh, that's day twelve. Shoot, day twenty one. Oh yeah, we're building a raft, so we're gonna be on a raft, and we're probably gonna get attacked by sharks. Yeah, I would have liked it to be more interesting than this, but hopefully, hopefully the next couple of days are more interesting. Hopefully, maybe I can make up something in the next four days thank you for watching if you're on youtube give it a thumbs up and uh subscribe if you're on twitch then you should come over and follow me if you're on youtube you should come over and follow me as well i'm doing this every single day so far so good we've solved all the problems um and i'm hoping that continues um, we're going for day 2022 20, tomorrow at 10 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. All right, see ya.